At this point, you know how to make food chains. For example, let's start with a producer, a plant. In this case, grass. Well, rabbits love fresh grass. They need lots of it for energy to bounce around so much. In this case, the rabbit is the primary or first consumer. In the same way, foxes love rabbits. Foxes need to get their energy from smaller animals, like rabbits. In this case, the fox is the secondary consumer. Sometimes, foxes are hunted by coyotes, wolves, or bears. But in many ecosystems, foxes aren't hunted by any natural predators. So, in environments like this, we call the fox. The apex predator. Thus, we have completed the food chain. We can think of each animal as a link in a chain. Thus, the name food chain makes total sense. Let's make another food chain. Let's start with our producer, a plant. In this case, a berry bush. Well, many small birds love berries. They need lots of energy to fly around and sing songs. In this case, the bird is the primary or first consumer. In the same way, owls eat smaller birds. Owls get their energy from smaller animals, like small birds. In this case, the owl is the secondary consumer. Because owls aren't usually hunted by any natural predators, we call the owl the apex predator in this food chain. Again, we can think of each animal as a link in a chain. Thus, the name food chain makes total sense. These nice and tidy food chains definitely help us understand the way that nature transfers energy from one species. To the next, but as you know, nature isn't quite so tidy. For example, a grasshopper also loves grass. A caterpillar also loves berry bushes. A mouse would enjoy either grass, berries, or even a grasshopper or caterpillar. A small bird. Would not only enjoy berries, but would also be very happy to get energy from a grasshopper or a caterpillar. A raccoon would gladly eat grass, berries, grasshoppers, caterpillars, and even mice and small birds. A snake would also happily get energy from mice or a small bird. The fox loves rabbits, but would just as happily go after mice or small birds. The owl loves small birds, but would just as happily go after snakes, mice, or even rabbits. What about a black bear? He's the biggest animal in many Canadian forests. The bear is typically happy to eat grass, berries, and various insects. They'll eat other animals, but typically only if they're already dead. Hmm. Our nice tidy chains are now all messed up. Instead of a straight chain with each animal representing a link in the food chain, we have lines all over. It no longer looks like a chain. With lines everywhere, it looks more like a a web. Yes, with lines everywhere, this looks more like a spider web. Thus, you probably won't be too surprised that we call this type of diagram a food web, a system of interlocking and interdependent food chains that all connect together. In this tutorial, we took our understanding of food chains and showed how we can combine multiple food chains. Within an ecosystem, to create a food web. 
food chains are straight lines starting with a producer and ending with an apex consumer. Each organism is like a link in the chain, a food chain. In a food web, we no longer have a straight chain. We have lines all over, showing the interlocking relationships between the food chains. Instead of a chain, all those lines make it look more like a web. Thus, you can remember that this interdependent diagram is called a food web.